morning, y'all. A great day. I don't know, it might not be morning when you saying this. But hey, today we're going to talk about Ashe. I probably spoke about it before, but I'm old. I don't remember stuff. But I'm coming back from the future to let you know that we are going to be talking about Ashe. And I'll see you at the show. to the show. What you waiting for? seeds you see in there is that black seed um, so I said alright I gave the black seed oil to try let's get just the straight black seed to try the root that's floating around here is turmeric we've been working with that we got a little bit of uh, I don't give up the whole recipe you know those that want it y'all can hit me up at Giami Journey I'll give you the recipe you can make it at home alright so, today, we're going to be working with that world-famous ginseng root. We had ginseng ambrosia this morning. But, of course, you know, we got to start off with our water. And I want to say great Ujima to you this morning. Um, I see you, Mr. Mister Kwame. Thank you for joining me this morning. We're about to pour these libations. Well, drink these libations, right? You know, um. Uh, Warm into our sip, so we're gonna start start with my 32 ounces. So start with my water. Drink up with me, fam. Grab your glass. Drink up. It's almost done. I'm still experimenting. You can't hear me? Well, my volume is all the way up. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's on your end. Uh, <clears throat> my volume is all the way up. Can you hear me now? So now I'm doing the chlor oxygen. I'm 
still experimenting. Review is coming soon. I know I've been promised y'all to review on the uh, Black Seal. Still deciding how I'm going to come at that because a few people are going to be upset. My comments on some Black Seed oil. So, drinking that chloroxygen. Finishing up the last little bit of water. <clears throat> now it's time for that ambrosia. So this is the ginseng with the root. I didn't put any of the crystallized ginseng in there. Um, this is a straight root. It's been sitting for a couple of days. Added a new batch to it. So that's going to now. See how it is. You still can't hear me, bro. I don't know what's going on. As far as that. Um, Ginseng is very active, so when I put the top on, I don't, I don't like being held up. Uh, hold on. Can you hear me now? Alright, so now, of course y'all can't see it because it's in the blue glass. Alright, so here we go. First, send a shout out to the creator by whatever name you choose. Call it creator. Alright. Um, we toast the creator. We lift that energy up. And we say, I say. Now, speaking of Ashe, that's what we're going to be talking today, talking about today on the show, Ashe, all right? So now, from there, we move to our personal ancestors. We call on our personal ancestors, our friends and family um, that have helped build us into who we are today, who have given us the skill or at least given us access to the skills, because some of us wouldn't know most of the stuff we know if not for those individuals who came into our life and, and, and sparked that interest in the points of mastery that many of us um, are working on in our lives at this point in time. We want to thank those ancestors. We want to remember those ancestors. We want to toast those ancestors. We want to lift those ancestors up and thank them for being present in our life. And thank them for blessing us and thank, thank them, thank them for having the insight and the foresight to help build us into who we are today. So we toast them and we say, I say, from there we move. My fault, I'm jumping, I'm moving, trying to move too fast. My fault, I got to send out shots to my personal ancestors. I call them Miles Brown, Miss Ann, Robert the Texan of Davis. Miles Brown, Miss Ann, Robert the Texan, and Davis, Herman Brown Sr., Rosalie Tilly, Georgia William Walter, Christopher Fanny Gatson, Aunt Lena, Uncle Chris, Geneva Brown, Cleveland Brown, Margaret Ellis, Cecil Ellis, Wash Ellis, my Aunt Alvaro, um, my Aunt Gina, No More X, Pastor Yusuf Weston, Dr. Mary Ann Williams, John Fillard, Jamon Jones, uh, 
Elder Donaldson, Elder Hairston, Elder Farmer, Montague Pittman L, Mama Malika, Oh man, I apologize. I don't know what's going on with Facebook, but they might make me have to go and do something else because I'm not understanding what's going on as far as the sound. So we toast those ancestors and we call on them and we remember them. We remember our ancestors and we say, Ashe. Right now we toast this moment. We are on the day of Ujamaa, Cooperative Economics. And I'm going to build with you on that, talking about that Ashe today. So we toast this moment and we say ashe we toast our children our children children on to infinity we we build for them right we remember them right so we toast our children man all right so once again i don't know what's i don't know what's going on on my end let's see Uh, one more time. My sound is all the way up. I don't know. Um, we toast. All right, we toast, and we say, "I say we toast our children, our children, children on to infinity because everything that we build, everything that we think, say, and do, is for them." So we toast and we say, "I say." Last but not least, I toast you. I thank you for joining me every day. Um, when you do join me, um, those that are here now, those that are not, I toast you. And I say, I say, I say, I say, I say, I wish you peace, power, and 100 years. Sweetness is gone, man. This mm. good sipping, yes, Lord. Mm. All right, so Facebook, I want to thank you um, for joining us. Those that are tuning in later or when you tune in, so. What we're going to do is we're about to get into this discussion because it's time for me to get my son out, right? So he can start doing his study. So now, I told you, Facebook, and we're about to get busy on the other end. So I'm out. Peace. All right. It's just me and you, you two. Just me and you. Alright, so we're going to mix up the other drink real quick. This time I'm going to start with the coconut oil. Antibacterial, antimicrobial things going. We are going to check on the palm oil today. I'm gonna add a little palm oil. I usually don't add the palm oil, I usually just take that, but hell, we might as well knock it all out with one swoop, right? So, today we're gonna be talking about. I told y'all I'll be giving y'all those breaks, so y'all let me know if the break and the time. 
is working for you, okay? Um, because uh, sometimes people want to jump straight to the information, so I'm trying to give them the space so that they can be able to jump straight to it, be able to find it real easy. I'm going to throw a little bit of cayenne in. That's a little bit too much cayenne. All right. I'm going to throw that cinnamon in. I throw the cinnamon in already. You got cinnamon in already. And that ambrosia vinegar. Fill that bottle. I'm about to go on. get into my reserves. Yeah, I know those parasites got me spooked, but I think I'm alright right now. So we're going to be able to give it a break for a couple of days. Maybe. I kind of like the detox drink. Never had a detox drink that I like. So now, what we talking about today, fam? Today, we are talking about Ashe. Y'all often hear me say Ashe, right? Y'all often hear me talking about this term, Ashe. When we pour libations, we talk about Ashe, right? So now, I became familiar with the term Ashe in my for my community in my community we would use the term my elders taught me to use the term in the place of our men you know what I'm saying because now the African Afrocentric community for a while you know we was looking for because I've been you know I've been involved with this stuff for a long time for a while we was looking for uh, replacements for terms, you know what I'm saying? Because like part of uh, Kuji Chagalia, self-determination is defining ourselves for ourselves. So we start looking for things that will connect us back to our culture. And our shade was one of those words, right? So, you know, people would just use it as a, a confirmation word. Like, um, if I'm speaking to you, you understand what I'm saying, say our shade, right? And, you know, I started looking into the word for myself. And one of the things that I found about this word, one of the things I found about this word was that it was a little bit deeper than just saying, I agree. It was a little bit deeper than confirming, right? Ashe is a Yoruba word, right? That speaks about the life force, right? The life force. What is it? What's this life force, right? The life force is this energy that flows through us and around us. We extract our shade out of everything. We supposedly are pulling our shade out of everything, right? So being deeper, you know what I'm saying, than just the idea of confirmation, our shade was a universal force that combined and connected everything, right? Plants had our shape. Bugs had our shape. Um, animals had our shape. The very air we breathe had our shape. And in my, in my other studies, prior to African studies, I had ran into terms, and with my African studies, I had ran into terms like chi. If you are in martial arts, they talk about chi, right? Um, in Chinese martial arts, in Japanese martial arts, they talk about this stuff called Ki, right? K-I, right? And then in Indian, Indian law, they talk about this thing called Prana, right? Which is a bioelectrical energy, right? 
which is Ashe. So you look at all these different cultures and you got this one idea of this life force flowing through all of them. And all of these systems, all of these cultures had a way of teaching people to cultivate and to move this energy, right? You know, so in martial arts, you learn to move the Ashe or move the Chi or move the Ki through action. Boom. Boom. You're able to project your ashe. You're able to channel it within yourself and you're able in attacks as well as in defense. And you're enabled to move this chi so that it can assist you. Same thing with prana in, in, in the Indian tradition, in their yoga, you know what I'm saying, in their breathing exercises. They learned how to cultivate this chi in the Yoruba tradition. You learned how to cultivate um, cultivate um, this chi. Then when I was in Ghana, they had a word for it, right? Then we had the Native Americans. They had a word for it. So all these cultures constantly talk about this force called, that we call, or I choose to call Ashe. And y'all see me spell it A-X-E, right? That's from my tradition. That's from um, me uh, um, um, dealing with uh, Capoeira, because in um, in 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 the way they, the way they spell it in Brazil is A X E with a with a dash over because I guess the X makes like a chi chi sound, so it's ache. You know what I'm saying? So now I, and I like it. You know, it could look kind of fly to me. You know what I'm saying? I look like axe chop. My chop, my shade, right? So, this energy that is out here, this bioelectric energy, right, that connects you to the universe, that this energy that you are able to pull on and use and apply in your life, right? And also, one of the first places that I ran into the whole idea. There's energy forces when I fell in love with the movie Star Wars. They talked about the force, right? So oftentimes what you see is in, in other cultures, you hear about this term. But then what happened in media is they make this force mysterious. They make this force something for uh, fairy tales, right? So we don't pay attention to it. Right, because we're taught that it's like a game. We're taught that it's it's something that that only happens in comics, right? You you got Iron Fist in in the comic books where he's able to get the Iron Fist by channeling this force, and it's, it becomes cartoonish, right? When in fact this energy is very real. Everything we consume has a certain ache to it. Right? A life-giving principle, or it's supposed to have. But now, what you have is, we already kind of talked about this, we have processes that in this country, especially America, they are extracting the, the life force out of food. They are extracting the life force out of water, and they're turning these things against us, and we're consuming things without a shape. You know what I'm saying? They call it empty calories, right? They call it empty calories, right? You just, you, you, you get the bare minimum. But when you start interacting with, with the herbs that you use, when you start interacting with the drinks that, that you consume, when you start interacting with them and you start realizing that these things are providing you with a force that moves you, a force that not only could move you, but if you learn to plug into it, right? This is why in the Guza Saba, I focus on the breath. I focus on you getting the water. I focus on you enlivening yourself, right? You, 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 you learning to harness your own energy. Now, what good is this, brother? I tell you, when you can influence your energy, you can influence the energy around you. I need y'all to really understand me. This is why we talk about the ashe breath. This is why we talk about taking a whole breath so that we are able to pull this energy out of the universe 
and get it moving in our body. Now, anybody who has ever been to a funeral of a loved one, when you walk in and you look at that body, at the weight, you notice something missing, don't you? Right? Other than them not moving and stuff, there's a certain energy that's not, that's not them in the casket. You understand what I'm saying? There's something missing, and it's this ashe that we are able to pull in and use to keep us alive. When the ashe is gone, death comes. Right? So we need to learn to harness our ashe. Right? When our ashe is low, we become sick. So we need to learn how to pull this life force in. This is why, when, like I said, I focus you on that breath, right? You know what I'm saying? Adding living things to your diet, greens and, and, and the fruit and the nuts and stuff like that. Because you have to extract this energy force. And by building the force up in you, you can start influencing things in your life, right? With the ashe, the thing I want you to understand is this. Life attracts life, right? Not only can you start harnessing the ashe, once you start moving in the mind state that you have this power, whether whatever you call it, you have this power, you start attracting things into your life. Right? By us ignoring this life force, by us ignoring it, acting like it doesn't it don't exist. You know what I'm saying? What we do is we rob ourselves of power. We rob ourselves of the ability to bring into our lives what we need to bring into our lives. Right? You know what I'm saying? Because it's like once you it's like you're a battery. Right? Now one of the things you got to watch out for a lot of times is that you have ashe suckers, individuals who can't get their own energy up, so they they gravitate to you to try to suck your energy, right? Understand this is a fair fair trade. You know what I'm saying? You don't want people around you just just sucking on you. One of the reasons that I went from trying to do things with people in person and started doing more of the daily toasts and doing more things just with podcasts and stuff like that was because you got some people who are sick and don't even know they're sick, right? They're sick. They, 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 they're not able to pull on their own ashe, and they, they live off of pulling off of other people's life energy, right? You're going to need to start pushing certain certain vampires, you know what I'm saying? They, they're pulling the a vampire is something that lives off of Ashe. They live off of your life force. They're pulling on it. Some of y'all in relationships with people who just pull off your life force. Some of y'all work in places that's just pulling on your life force. Right? So now, on this day of Ujama, right? One of the most precious resources that we have. The one that feeds all five parts of the being. All five parts. And the major way you get it is how you breathe. The major way you get it is in your breathing. Then in what you drink. Then in what you eat. You pull it this life force. So this is why we have to start learning to direct and guide and consciously to do things that increase our ashe, right? Because this, this, this energy, man, because it's, it's deep. Once you start really, really moving in it and really moving in the force, you'll be able to guide it on the physical level. On the, well, let's say all levels, but on the physical level. And you, you will go to YouTube now and you can pull up people using their ashe using their chief force and doing incredible things. But I don't want you just to be a spectator of this force. I want you to start experiencing and allowing it to flow in your life. Right? So that you can have, so that you can start 
creating miracles for yourself. Right? It's not a it's not a it's not a it's not luck. It's not a happenstance. Right? It's something that you could plug into. So like one of the things that I send out to everybody that's that that signs up for the Guzi Saba challenge is what I call an Ashe breath. Right? I do not I, I culturally appropriate. I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. I culturally appropriate exercises, right? And I purposely get us focusing on using our cultural words and and using it in our culture so that we could build ourselves up, so that we could move in life in the way we want and bring the things into our lives that we need so that we could build, right? I'm exchanging every day that we sit and we talk every day when I'm doing this, we exchanging our shade, right? The small amount of comments that y'all giving, y'all sending me life energy, right? I'm 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 pouring life energy into you. I'm pouring our shade into you. I'm pouring bioelectricity into you because I'm focused on making sure that I'm able to bring a value into your life. The value I'm bringing is I'm awakening the ideas of some of these ancient practices, some of these ancient ideas that I'm, I'm trying to awaken up in you, right? And the major one that I'm trying to wake up in you is that I say, you have the power. It's all around you. You just can't see it. You, you've been processed. You've been over-processing the system that's, that teaches you that if you can't touch it and feel it, it's not real. But you come from a culture, you come from a people that's for a long time been able to comfortably deal with the mysteries of life and been able to use the mystery of life, like this Ashe energy, to make things happen. Something happened to us when we were stripped. We were stripped. And because we were stripped of this, these ideas, because we were stripped of this consciousness, of the great mystery, because like really, when you talk to the Native Americans, they make it very clear to you. They call it, they call it the great mystery, right? The the, the whole, all this energy, all these things around us, we can influence them, right? To start working for us, rather than us, rather than us struggling through life in the way we are. And the more of us that start practicing and recognizing the energy. The more powerful the group becomes, the more powerful the group becomes, the more powerful the individuals become. We're not directing and guiding our life force. We are other people draining our life force. When you go to those jobs that you don't like, right? You think that you're you're doing nothing. You think that you're wasting time. You think that you're slick with some of the stuff that you're doing. But they're pulling on your life force. Right? The doctors is pulling on your life force. Right? The government is pulling on your life force. A lot of y'all are focusing and sending energy focused on stuff that you don't need to be focused on. You're not focusing on you. You're not building you. The only thing I'm asking, the only thing I'm trying to point out to you is, family, you have a powerful resource that you're wasting. Right? Cooperative economics. Economics is about how things flow. Right? What are the economics of your life? What are the economics of of you and your relationship to your Ashe? Are you spending it properly? Are you getting a return on your investment? ROI? Are you getting a return on your investment in life force? And the things that you're applying your life energy to? This is Brother Atiyah, and I want to thank you for tuning in. I would appreciate comments, your ideas, um, your experiences. You can post them down below, right? Make sure you take the Ngoo Saba Challenge. It'll be posted down below. Make sure you support G&J because we're supporting, you know what I'm saying? I'm supporting you, you know what I'm saying? All those friends and fa friends and family at Jeremy Journey. You know what I'm saying? When you get to us, we get to you. 
You, you know what I'm saying? You support your army journey. I support you with that Ambrose, right? This is Brother Hatil. And I am out. Thank you for watching the video. I want you to subscribe. Click the bird right there. The fiery bird. And I also have a special video just for you. Right there. And for those that want more information about Jamie Journey, go to our site. It should be right about there.